Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. Uh, we're going to learn how to prepare a project proposal for biome biomedics call for application. My name is Tristan Tidona. I'm the founder and the managing director of the Biomedics Institute, and uh, I'm very happy to be with you uh, today. So first of all, as some of you already know, um, there is a platform which is called career.bio.mx. Uh, we call it career space where you can apply for any job or any funding at any one of our global locations uh, or our biomedics institute in Heidelberg. Once you have decided that you would like to apply for a call for application, so a new research team, uh, then you have three questions you need to answer for yourself. So first question is, why should I write a proposal? Second, what should I include in my proposal? And third, how can I make sure that my proposal stands out? And in today's webinar, I'm going to give you a couple of tips and tricks um, how you can really uh, navigate the, the, the way how you write your proposal and submit and hopefully win. Um, now, let's go to the first question. Why should I write a proposal? Well, answer is very simple. We use the proposal to learn about you, whether you are a, a great candidate for one of our boot camps. Uh, here you see a picture of a recent boot camp of our institute in Heidelberg. Um, it's a great experience. Within five days, uh, you meet lots of other inspiring young talents from around the world. Uh, you discuss your ideas and you come up with an amazing project proposal and you learn how to create a pitch, a 15 minute pitch presentation, uh, which you then will present in front of the senior management uh, of a pharmaceutical company that's collaborating with us. So it's in any case, it's a great experience. And uh, the proposal for us is very important to find out who are the best possible candidates we can put together um, and, uh, in such a boot camp to get the best possible outcome. Um, this is a picture of our boot camps uh, in Israel with Ion Labs. They're a little wilder, uh, a little more sunshine, uh, fun as well. And they're all about artificial intelligence for drug discovery and development. And very soon you will be able to, um, to join also our institute our brand new institute uh, in New Haven, Connecticut, close to the campus of Yale University. Um, uh, so uh, currently there's three different locations uh, where you can apply by submitting a project proposal. Now, next question, what should I include in my proposal? And that's not so simple. So first of all, it's very important to um, make sure that you describe why you are going to do a certain project. Uh, ad addressing the call of uh, the, the topic of our, of our call for application. Uh, I would call it a scientific rationale. Um, usually scientific rationale is uh, a publication, uh, a paper that really inspired you or um, uh, some background about the topic that really interests you telling us why you're interested in, in doing this particular project. And it's very important that you read the call for application carefully so that you don't go off topic. The second uh, part of your proposal should be, what are you going to do? And that's also very important to formulate very well. Um, we call it central hypothesis. So which aspect of the problem you read in our call for application, you would like to address with your specific proposal from your specific angle. And then thirdly, what's very important is then only after you've shown us why and what you're going to do, you're going to tell us how you would do it. And this is just the key, this means just the key experiments uh, which you would propose to tackle this particular problem uh, in order to validate or devalidate your central hypothesis. We're talking here about a project proposal of between two and five pages, ideally. And um, so, so it's not a typical grant application with 20 pages and a lot of chapters. It's something that really gives us, in a very short summary, gives us an idea um, whether you have understood the problem and also uh, whether you have uh, had the creativity to come up with the really novel idea to solve this particular problem. Now next, how can I make sure that my proposal stands out? Uh, and this is the most difficult of all because usually we get several hundred applications and we're only inviting 15 candidates usually to our boot camps. So it's very important that you do whatever, whatever possible to stand out in this huge uh, pile of applications. So the first very important thing is uh, show us that you're passionate about the topic. 
And this is best done in the introduction of your pro project proposal. Connect it somehow to your present research. You don't really have to, to, to win a, a ticket for a bootcamp. You don't really have to have a very solid track record usually in the research field, because we are looking for scientists from all different disciplines that come up, that are passionate about the topic, and they come up with a, a really original solution from a very specific um, uh, and, and very different viewpoint. So it's very important in the first few sentences that you show us somehow uh, that you're passionate about the topic. The second one, uh, the second part, which is very important, is uh, that you show us that you are a good scientist. And this is, of course, um, it, uh, it depends on how you write your proposal. A good scientist will always use the correct terminology. A good scientist will somehow show us that he or she has understood the background uh, of the challenge. A good scientist will be very critical also with hypotheses or other people's publications. A good scientist will um, use citations whenever you use other people's knowledge and put that into your, uh, uh, into your proposal. Also, a good scientist will argue on the ground of scientific evidence and never exaggerate um, or use terms which are, which are very superficial. So it's very important that you use this opportunity to show us by the, by the style how you write your proposal uh, that you are a good scientist. And third, it's important that you show us that you're creative because at Biomedics, we're tackling really big uh, challenges in current biomedical research and development. And this means it is very important that uh, you, you, you have a, a critical view, you're a very curious person, and you can think outside the box and come up with solutions where all of us who are experienced in the field sit back and say, wow, why didn't we think about this? This is really cool. This is really original. So be creative and dare to think outside of the box. So these were the, the, basic, uh, the basic rules um, or, or tips how to write a great proposal. And uh, to close, I would now go into a couple of questions that have come up. Let me quickly stop sharing my screen so that I can talk to you about those questions. So, okay, there's one question from Tina saying, should the written proposal be similar to a grant proposal? Is there an example that can be used as a reference? Um, as I said, we want you to be creative. So please don't send us recycled grant proposals. Uh, most of the time they're off topic, uh, out of scope. Uh, it's very important that you focus on the challenge of the actual call and you read this very carefully and, uh, and try to address this call very specifically. Um, a, a recycled grant proposal or a grant proposal that is a very long proposal will not be very appealing for our evaluation committee to read. So um, you're not going to collect lots of points um, and, uh, and will not be able to win a ticket for our bootcamp. So make it short, two to five pages, and, and um, make it very specific. Next question is from Marcus. Does it need to include original data? What about figures? Whatever you can put in your proposal that shows us that you're an expert in the field, you have done uh, previous work on which your proposal is based, even better. So include your own reference, include figures, make it appealing for the evaluation committee who are all scientists to read your proposal. Um, next question from Tom. Is a timeline and a budget necessary to add? Um, no. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, this project proposal is for us a means to assess whether you're a good candidate for a bootcamp. So you don't, you don't need to show us a very detailed plan. In the two to five pages, you won't fit a, a timeline and a budget anyway. So um, just focus on the key experiments and, and, and wow us with the originality of your experimental approach. Let's see. There's one from Ahmed. We would like to apply as a team. Is that possible? Do we need to submit individual proposals or a group proposal? So uh, this is actually a very good question. Of course, you can apply as a team. Um, but then when you submit the project proposal, each of you should uh, have his or her own profile uh, applying in our system and then upload the very same proposal and then indicate in a box which is uh, underneath the place where you can upload your proposal, it's about I, uh, IP ownership. You just mentioned that this is a joint proposal between the two or three of you. 
Uh, and then uh, we will notice that and we will discuss that together with our, our evaluation committee. Next question from Vishal. My, ex my expertise only partially overlaps with the expertise required for this position. Can I still apply? Yes, yes, yes. What's very important in, in our boot camps and also at Biomedex that we have people from all kinds of disciplines that look upon these very tough problems from a different perspective. So even if you're not, uh, uh, if you don't have a long track record in our in the field of our call, you're very welcome to apply. And we always have people at the boot camp and also at the Biomedex Institute that are coming from completely different disciplines. So um, no need to to have a very long track record. Let's see what's next. Um, Anna, I do not have a PhD title. Can I still apply? Um, of course you can. We are looking for three different types of uh, researchers for the bootcamp and also for our teams on site. The first category is a research group leader. That's typically um, individuals who have finished their PhD, who maybe have finished their first uh, postdoc and feel ready to lead their own team and uh, feel ready to have uh, their first budget responsibility. So the group lead for the group leader candidates, it's, um, it's not required that you have leadership or budget responsibility um, experience, uh, but you should have finished your PhD and you should have some sort of a, a first um, evidence that you are an expert in the field uh, based on your publications and also based on the quality of your proposal. The second category is postdoc, uh, postdoctoral researchers. These can be people that uh, just finished their PhD or already had a first postdoc and want to do a second postdoc. And then the third category, that's the coming back to Anna's question, that's uh, the so-called research assistant. A research assistant uh, at biomedics is usually a PhD student. Uh, so if you have finished a master's degree and you would like to apply as a PhD student, uh, you can do that. And also uh, what's uh, what we have sometimes is people who are just happy with their master's degree and would like to, uh, to do research with their master's degree. They're also very welcome to apply. Uh, next question from Tatiana. Do I need to prepare a project proposal even if I apply for the postdoc position and not the group leader one? Yes, uh, you do, because we use this uh, project proposal um, as a means to assess your suitability for uh, our bootcamp. Uh, and, and since we can only learn um, a limited, um, uh, a limited uh, uh, features from your CV and from the information you provide, we have identified the project proposal as the best possibility to learn a lot about you what, uh, when it comes to your creativity, your scientific uh, excellence, uh, and also your passion about the project. So please, even as a research assistant candidate or as a postdoc candidate, please submit a project proposal. Uh, don't send something that is recycled. Don't uh, just upload um, any other document about yourself. Really take the time to write a short proposal between two and five pages. And of course, for us, it's clear that with a master's degree, the depth is not the same like a group leader candidate, which is perfectly fine. But it's very important for us to see that you have taken the time to think about the problem and to come up with uh, with a compelling solution. Uh, last question is from Matt. Does the number of first author publications matter for being invited to the bootcamp? Of course, the our evaluation committee, they are scientists, and of course, they will look at the track record of every applicant that is coming. And first author publications, especially in, in high impact journals, are usually a good indication <clears throat> that you are a very experienced scientist. Uh, but of course, uh, especially when you are early in your career, it is completely clear for the evaluation committee that uh, you don't have lots of publications or lots of first author publications. Uh, so you can compensate the lack of publications, for example, with a really outstanding project proposal. And that would give you the same or even better chances than someone with a very long publication list who sends in a very boring proposal. So I hope with this uh, with this uh, quick webinar, we could answer some of your questions, how to prepare a great proposal, uh, what you should do, what you should not do. And if you have any further questions, we're also always happy to answer your emails um, uh, when you have questions and also when you address us via LinkedIn. So thanks uh, to you all and hoping to see you all at one of our future bootcamps. Bye bye.